Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back to the painting channel. Now something a little different today, I did a review on a watercolor pad from Etcher Labs a few months ago out in the field when I was doing some plein air. They reached out again and asked me would I have a look at these two products and give my honest review for you guys. So they sent them over and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. So what have I got? Well, this is something I've looked at several times in the past. I've never quite grasped the idea of them and that is an accordion sketchbook. Now, I'm going to unwrap these in a minute and take a closer look. I haven't actually done that at the moment, but um, Etcher are extremely good at their product creation. They do look at what people need and they do look and see how they can best achieve that for the artist and that is not just the beginner artist but that's also the consummate professional artist. They cater for everybody I think but this starter kit I think looking at what I've looked at on their site is designed and aimed at the beginner painter. Those of you who are just getting started with watercolor not quite uh, sure on what to buy and what to spend your hard-earned money on these guys have sat down and said well let's put it all in a nice presentation box everything they need to get started with watercolor for one price and then they know exactly what they're spending and you know it does cater for everything so we're going to take a look inside this one first and then we're going to take a look inside this one so I'm wrapping this for the first time. I always appreciate how well something is, is um, created and sent to a client. And this is nothing short of that too. A lovely presentation box. Okay, now. so one lovely box. And, you know, even down to this insert here, which is like a, uh, a forced velvet, uh, type affair it really does look the bis uh, the business so let me just see take this pad out so that's all you're getting on that side is a 20 sheet watercolor block nice that it's a watercolor block nice that it's um, a suitable size it's not too big not too small for the beginner and the block being the fact that it is gummed on all four sides and one corner is left ungummed so you can actually take a credit card and prize underneath that and lift it out, take the top sheet off and get ready for your next um, painting session. And the nice thing about this is that it's 50% cotton. Now, lovely if you could afford to have one that is actually 100% cotton, but it is better than having just wood pulp, 50% paper, and uh, you know wood pulp and 50% cotton is really nice and if you are uh, worried about being vegan friendly then it is absolutely vegan friendly 300 grams per square inch is about 140 pounds in weight so it really is a nice starter size and a nice weight to get into when you're beginning to play around with watercolor cold press is also called not and that is like a medium um, sort of weight of, of texture. And in here, and they are aiming this really, as I said, at those of you who are just thinking about starting out in painting in watercolor and want to get going and understanding what you need to buy and get to, to in order to do that. So there's a nice booklet with uh, an introduction, why watercolor, really nicely presented and it's the first time I've seen this so you're seeing it as I'm seeing it quite honestly and I put any links that you need to uh, get to Etcher to purchase this I do believe that much of it in the UK you can get from Jackson's I think they cover or carry the Etcher range but there is so much here so much information about brushes and how they're made and these are all vegan friendly so that really is um, a consideration in today's um, world when you know we are very very ethical as well hopefully most of us are very ethical on what we believe and think 
And here is what appeared to be the range of colors in this uh, little set. So you've got a good starter set of colors as well. We'll get onto those very shortly. But there's a lot of exercises, color mixing, swatching, and all of these things, color mixing charts. All of these things really are important learning guides. So that, if you're a beginner, is really a good piece of kit to have. And there is also an introduction to a free watercolor course. Obviously, you just go on to that and use your phone to get to the link from there. And you will be open to uh, getting yourself even more information from a free course that they're doing. So that's worth considering. Look at this. Lovely, well presented. You have three brushes. Now, these are, as I said, they are synthetic and they are vegan friendly. So, and they look the part as well. Now they appear always stiff. I get a lot of questions from people when they get a brush and it's stiff. They think there's something very, very wrong. It's not. When a brush is made like this, so it doesn't splay or cause a problem, it's dipped in gum Arabic and allowed to dry. And that's what this is. If I just take a little bit of water and just release that gum, just put that into there. You can see how now the brush is very pliable and will move. All it is is the gum arabic glues up or literally sets like a glue and keeps the bristles from getting messed up in their packaging. And so if you go to a shop and you get a brush and you think, oh, there's something wrong with that, invariably there really isn't anything wrong with it. It's just the gum that's put together. This has got a protective cover. I don't ever keep these. You can if you want to, but I always find that once you've been using it, it's very, very hard to always get that over the top. When it's set in gum, like this one is, you can see it's stiff again. When it's set in gum like this, then this part at the end of the process is very easy just to put on the brush for marketing. But when you've used this brush and it is no longer set with gum and you've released the bristles, as I've done with this one now. Now the shape is flexible. You can see very pliable as it should be. Creates a lovely point, which is good. But the more you use it, the more difficult it is to get that piece over there. I've done it this time, but many, many times you trap a hair and you pull it down. Next time you come to use it and you've got this stray hair everywhere. So I don't tend to use those. All right, so the last brush is a small round. So we've got a nice fairly decent round brush and we have a nice flat and we have a nice small round we just release that one off at the same time there we go beautiful brushes gotta say they really are a treat now they are branded um, for etcher and so they've got the etcher name it's a number 12 and a number Hartwell. A 12 and a 6 in a round, and it's got a lovely half inch flat. But they're nice ergodynamic handles. They've got a nice shape to them. They sit well in the hand. They work very nicely from that point of view. I quite like the styling as well, which is the black, essentially the black ferrules. All looks extremely nice and well presented, and they are well presented. So I'm going to leave those there for a moment, and let's going to look at what comes here now these are also aimed at those who wishing to do a little bit of ink and wash as well so you have two waterproof pens now i don't know i'm sure they are waterproof i'm sure they must be yes of course they are and if you take the lid off of this one you have a very fine tip to this brush or this pencil now i think the other one might be yes there we are. So one of them is a steel nib, and that will give you a precise mark each and every time you use it. It's a prescribed size. I do believe that this one is, where are we to get the, I think it's about a 0.5. It may be even a bit th thicker than that. Um, I can't actually see. It must be on here. If not, it will be in the details but it could be even thicker than that, but I think it's about a 0.5. I 
and this is a flexible um, brush pen. Now, the nice thing about a brush pen is, and I will demonstrate that soon, but you get a beautiful point and you can use that as a brush, broad tip, side, body and the belly of the brush and it will deliver black ink in various sizes and widths of uh, mark making. So you've got two options there. And they aren't, they aren't refillable, but they uh, certainly will give you a great start when it comes to um, creating ink and washes. I do like this idea as well. Now this is just a little um, thing for a hat or a scarf or a bag or something that you can just push this on and have this beautiful little uh, gold effect uh, logo from Etcher of the Llama. I really do like that especially as the fact we have a local llama uh, community which my daughter-in-law works for. So I often see the llamas walking over from our, the back of our house. Um, so this is really quite nice to have that. And um, so that's good. All right, now the real important part of all of this kit, of course, is the watercolor pans. Now they are contained in a box or a cardboard box. So let's have a look at those and see what we think. We've already seen an indication of the colors come out. There we are, they're all out. So let's just put those on here for just a moment so we can see exactly what we've got. They're all half pans. You have a white, you have a blue, which is a cobalt blue, you have a one called Just Yellow, which is probably a little bit like a cadmium deep yellow or indeed a possible Indian yellow. You have a leaf green, which is pretty much as it says. You have here a umber brown, so you have a burnt umber. Uh, it looks like a red umber, so it's a, probably a burnt umber. And you have a Simply Red, which is probably like a cadmium scarlet or something of that nature. So you have the essential ingredients of a simple color set and makeup that you can create so much from. Now, it's not, the, it's not a definitive um, set of colors by any means. You've seen my videos on my colors that I use in mine. I'll put a link for that somewhere up in the video for you to look at if you want to. But when it comes to the colors here, they are a simple starter set. Now they're not artist quality, but they do, from what I've heard, do an extremely good job of um, creating uh, good color from the makeup and they're well pigmented. So I don't think that they're a lightweight in any uh, stretch of the imagination. But what I don't normally like seeing a white in a set, if I'm honest with you, I think that uh, white can be used quite easily to make, I mean, white generally is an opaque color. And what it does is that it will um, create opacity in any of these or any transparent colors that you use because it is white. But it also is very, very cooling. Now, traditionally as a watercolor, we use something called Chinese white if we do use any. But invariably, if we are using a white to put highlights in or something of that nature, often or not, we carry with us a um, gouache or even an acrylic titanium white just to put those strong highlights in. So I think that that could have been maybe replaced with something else, maybe a magenta to give you a secondary set of blues, an ultramarine blue. Anything like that, I think it would have been better to have an additional color as opposed to the tone. But everything I've seen so far really is absolutely fantastic. Now, the one thing that I've just realized looking at all of this, that you have a wonderful setup. Let's just put the box, uh, the details to one side. But you've got a lovely pad, which we're going to open in a moment. Just take a look at that. I do, as I say, I do like the idea of this as a beginner pad because this is a beginner set. This is, if you've never painted in watercolor before and you want to get going, this is just ideal to think about what do I need to buy? Well, it's all here. And this is no exception. This is a beautiful pad. You've got to take the top fly cover off 
uh, to reveal the first sheet of paper. And it will indicate somewhere on here, I'm sure, the best way to do that. Okay, so that we don't mess up. Now, I'd always advise using something like a credit card because the plastic edge is soft. If you use a knife, you do run the risk of slicing through the paper and into your next sheet, which you, of course, don't want to do that. Let's just take that out carefully. The idea with the block is that it almost, in a sense, pre-stretches your paper for you. You haven't got to worry about taping it down to a surface, waiting for that tape to dry out before you can start painting. But you can see from here we've got a beautiful texture. I don't know if the camera will actually pick that up. Just going to revolve it in case it does. But it's a lovely size to do small studies with, especially if you want to go outside and sit this on your lap and paint from that, I think would be ideal. And as I say, the block is such that you can come here. If you look there, the gum goes up so far and stops here. So you can insert a card under each subsequent sheet and just run it around and lift this off between paintings. Now you must wait for the top sheet you're painting to dry before you do that. Otherwise the uh, effect of tensioning again once it's drying out will not happen because obviously you've released the pressure. So leave it on, let it dry out, then release it off and then continue painting on this uh, pad. But I love it. It's a really nice size and 20 sheets really is uh, not to be sniffed at. Okay, so that is no longer needed, but it will demonstrate the white paint a little while further down the road. Now, one thing I have noticed, as I say, this is a starter set. And because of that, I feel that uh, it's missing something. And what it's missing is that it's got everything. It's got pens, it's got brushes, it's got paper, it's got paint. But what it's not got is a way of controlling these. Once you've opened these, once they're wet, if you, especially if you wanted to go outside with one of these, just take this off. If you want to take this outside, then you are going to have a hell of a problem to uh, control what happens to these. I think that it would have been nice, if all honest, that, that instead of having this little cardboard box with these in, is to make a slightly bigger indent there and have a small, very small, little uh, folding pan set, a little watercolor box in a sense. Very, very tiny, doesn't have to be much, but something where these will sit in and you can probably go for three colors on each side. So you could have a little box, very similar like that, with a little lid that becomes a mixing palette for you. I think that the cost of doing that, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not into the marketing, I don't know, but there may be a good reason why they didn't do that. But I think that there is a little bit of something missing from this set because of that. You know, once you start painting with these, how do you control them? You need to put them in something to hold them uh, or they become an absolute nightmare to paint with. So that's one criticism, if I have any, and it is the only one really so far. So I have had this old Altoids box for donkey shears, and I'm just going to simply probably put them in there like so. If you've got something similar, it will work like that. So you can get so many in there and later on if you feel the need uh, you can actually add to that. But from the point of view of just painting for the moment I'm going to put those in there. I can add to this if I want to and if I painted this with white acrylic then I could actually mix on there as well. So I have in effect created a little watercolor box. Now if you look at that that's way too big for the six but that would sit in there quite nicely. So Etcher, if you're listening to this, and I hope you are, I'm sure you will be, I think that maybe just the addition of a small watercolor tin with a lid that you can mix in would be really nice addition to this kit. And I think then you could turn around truly and say that this is an absolute beginner starter kit with everything being considered in the mix. So. 
That's my only criticism, is how do you control these paints once you've started using them. Okay, so that's the only negative. Everything else, got to say, is a big, big plus plus. And indeed, don't let that little negative stop you going about getting one of these because it answers all your questions as to what you need to buy. And just a small piece of uh, metal box or indeed a little plastic container to put these in, you can blue tack them, glue them in place, that will solve that problem. But um, yeah, I think it's a great kit, I really do. These brushes are absolutely stonking. They really are lovely brushes. Okay, I'm gonna put this away. I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna swatch the colors and let's just see how we get on with that. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly swatch these colors for you just to give you an idea of the consistency, the pigmentation and how they react when you take them out with water to a much paler tint. I'm not gonna do any color mixes, any cross mixing with this at the moment. This video will probably be too long as it is, but I might do another video later on. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do that and I can play around with these colors and see what we can mix from those. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the umber. I'm just gonna mix into that now. Give that a nice, start. You could spritz these or mist these before you started. I didn't do that. So I'm going to put this color on and just see how it frees up from the get-go, from the very start. So I'm going to put that color on there. I'm going to clean off and then just put some water to that. Just see how they mix down to that lovely tint. I like that. It really is a nice flow. Let's put that to one side. It's a lovely flow down. The color is really nice and it's a beautiful burnt umber. Now for the cobalt. Now cobalt blue is a very expensive pigment to use. I'm surprised that they actually have used cobalt over and above maybe uh, an ultramarine blue, but it's a useful blue. I prefer it a lot. Let's take that down. Beautiful, stunning. You know, I mean, I would argue that these are student quality uh, colors because they really are lovely colors. Now let's take the red and the water is, so they go to the water very, very easily, very, very nicely. They flow nicely. That's really stunning. And the pigmentation up there is really good quality. So let's come in with the yellow now, clean off the brush. These brushes, gotta say, love them. All right. Lovely yellow. Picking up the color, taking it down to a tint. And the green lastly. And this is like a sap green, they call it leaf green. And it's probably more of a leafy green than a sap green. Sap green tends to have a little more yellow in it. That really is, it's probably the hardest one to get going, but it's a lovely color green. Let's take that down. There's not as much pigment concentration in this green as there is in some of the others. I'm having to work a little harder for that, but it's still a beautiful green. And look at these tints as they go down. Okay, now lastly then, let's just quickly mix up on the white. Now the, I've got a little bit of color in my paintbrush, but let's just put some of that white on here. Now you can see how it is a sort of thinnish color to begin with. I mean, it's very, very hard to get a white that is so opaque out of the box that it does the job for you because it will, it will not uh, open itself up to doing many, many highlights areas. You need a stronger white for that. But this is great when it comes to adding maybe, let's put a bit of white on here. Pick some of that up. Let's pick up a little bit of yellow and making pretty much an opaque yellow color, and that will hold much more than this will. 
If I let those two dry and I'll show you the end result to those. In fact, let's just do one more. Let's just come in with a bit more of that white, pick some up on the brush, put some there. Okay, clean the brush and let's come in with a lovely bit of red into that, making a sort of opaque pinky color. And you can see how the white cools that red down. It's not as vibrant. I put that red next to it. It's a lively red, but you put white to it, then the white immediately cools that color down. And that's the effect of white. And that's the opacity happening. So it's very, very useful for many ways, but it's not one that I would jump for in my watercolor kit. Okay, so rounding this up, what do I think of this kit? Well, I think it is beautifully presented and I think you would go an awful long way to get this sort of quality of stuff for the money that they're charging. I'm not sure exactly the price, but I will leave that information under the show more tab underneath this video. But I think that when you consider what you're getting in the box, your pad, your paint, your brushes, and even these two uh, ink pens, which I'll just quickly demonstrate them for you here. This is um, probably, I don't know, I think it's more than a 0.5 is probably almost a millimeter one or 75.75, something like that. But it is a lovely um, pen and that you can do an awful lot of uh, lovely ink and washes with your watercolors, whether you put the ink on after or before the color, it really doesn't matter. But here, look at this, you can have so much fun. You can almost paint and draw. I love when I'm painting, I often draw with my brushes. I seldom, uh, certainly in oils and, and other things, I just go straight in with the paint and you can draw with these. You can create lovely marks, nice thick marks, thin marks, the very tip, and they hold up very, very well. So you can do anything in between like that. So that little brush pen is stunning. I love that. And it's got such a very sharp taper to a point. So there we are. So you've got ink pens, you've got paint, you've got a good quality pad to begin with. And um, you've even got a lovely llama pin to go with it all. But the box is lovely and presentation is beautiful. And you can keep your stuff in here quite happily. If you want to keep it all nice and neat, by all means, that's ideal. It's a lovely presentation. But I think you can go an awful long way now uh, when it comes to starting with watercolor. So, okay, so I'm just going to have a quick look at this before I finally finish. But let's get into this. I'm itching to see how this darn thing works. <laughs> but I love the outside. I love the light leather look to it. Um, these things are often so nicely presented from companies that you don't really want to start using them for fear of messing them up. But you must not be so precious because a sketchbook is, after all, a sketchbook. And, um, <laughs> wow, it's got four sides. <laughs> you know, that's, that freaked me out for a second because obviously, you know, it hasn't got a binding. So I'm assuming that's the start. Well, it will be. And it is a portrait, but you can use it the other way. Look at that. I love that. Now, I'm not saying that you should do a very long painting, but you can have a lot of fun with one of these because you can just simply start here and create your painting. And if you want to go on, you can do, and you can stretch it out to three sheets or four sheets or just do two or indeed just do one, whichever you want to go. But I think it works. And it also, of course, double-sided. You can just turn it over and go the other way. So I'm going to make this the subject of a video in the very near future, all on its lonesome, because it is something that I just need to get into, plan what I'm going to do with it, and uh, get onto it and see how it turns out in the fullness of time. So watch out for this one and... Uh, 
If you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe to it and click on the bell icon, the notification tab, and it will tell you when things like this are coming out in the future. And if you have liked this and enjoyed this, then take a look at Etcher. As I said, all the details to this and other of their products will be in the show more tab underneath the video. Give the video a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic. And as always, don't forget there is my Patreon full of tons of information, full length videos. Many of them are absolutely exclusive to the Patreon channel. And there is also my Sky course to look at if you want to get involved with that too. So yeah, I'm not going to say anymore. I think you've put up with me long enough. I hope you've got something from this little product review. I've enjoyed playing around with them and I am sure that uh, if you buy into one of these kits, you will not regret it because, you know, and I'm not just saying it because uh, Etcher sent me this to try out. I really do feel that what you get for your money is superb quality and the presentation is second to none. And I've come to, from what I've seen of Etcher, I've come to expect that their presentation really is hard to beat. And uh, as a, accepting for having something like a little watercolor tin to put those in, or even sending them to you in a little tin would be absolutely fantastic. And I think that would be the cherry on top of the icing for this already beautiful cake. So with that, I'm going to say cheerio. I'm going to catch you all in a video next week when we'll probably be looking at a gouache painting. So until that time, take care, everybody. All the best. Bye-bye.